Judy from Witch Peace Craft. Welcome. Well, it's a bit of an update on the week that was. Maybe it was a week and a half. I don't know. It's been a while. Um, I haven't got a lot to show you. I'm in a bit of a funk at the moment. I'm not getting much joy out of crochet and knitting. Um, that's probably because I'm just extremely tired. Um, we did our gala dinner and that's now over and hopefully I'll recover. I'll tell you about the gala dinner at the, the end. It was extremely difficult but a success. So because I'm probably so busy with my brain and admin at work, when I get home is it was really difficult for me to find any joy in either crocheting and knitting. I have about 10 whips on the go but most of them require concentration and my brain just wasn't up to it. However, my finished objects, well, the first one turned out a bit smaller than I anticipated and it's for Hooker versus Hooker Challenge in April. When they came up with the idea of Amigurumi and all the colours, I was going to do something huge. Well, here's my very big project. Ta da He's not very big at all. It's the colourful chameleon. So we could do amigurumi and we had green, beige, I guess, taupe, orange, hot pink, blue, and they were the colours we were to use. So I decided with the five colours, yeah, I think it's five, I would do this little colourful chameleon. I've made a chameleon before, but this particular pattern, well, I think the first one I made turned out better. This is a pattern by Yarn Inspirations. Now I made it with Marvel 8 ply, which is three weight DK as I've said before. It has safety eyes with some crocheted circles around it. And I kept trying to use all the colors that they had picked. And yes, he is cute, but he's not my best chameleon. So the pattern is over here. It is Yarn Inspirations Colourful Chameleon. It's a free pattern. As you can see in the brighter colours, he looks a lot better. And um, yeah, I'm just not keen on the legs. I have to remember which one I did before that I liked a lot better. Leave a link to all the patterns in the description below that I have used. So I haven't done much Bod Hatterpalooza this year. But there was one I thought, well, I wouldn't mind doing that and trying to do it in a child size. Now, it might be the ear flap pom-pom beanie, something like that. I will leave a link to Bag o Day's crochet tutorial. It is a good tutorial and I didn't mind it. And I did manage to do it in a toddler come child size. The reason I wanted that size is at my market, I noticed I didn't have a lot of children's beanies and I was being asked for more. I have made a variation to this and I'll explain why. So here it is, the ear flap pom-pom, as you can notice, hasn't got pom-pom beanie. So in the tutorial you put pom-poms at the end of the flap and on the top. And when I did one it was too much for this size. So I did some plaits and some twirly things on top. It's probably a little small for this head I'm showing it on. But it turned out really well. It is a four weight yarn. I just went really down in hook size. I either did four millimeter or 3.5. I can't remember, but I know to get it smaller with bag a day, I just keep going down hook size till I'm happy with the size I want. The yarn I used has been in my stash for a very long time, at least four years, and I have quite a bit of it, so you'll be seeing it more in the future. It's Premier Everyday Anti-Pilling Yarn at 4 weight, 165 metres, 180 yards of ball in the colour Antique Lavender. And that's what I had left from the 100 gram ball. I haven't weighed it yet, so I can't tell you how much is left. But that will go into my scrap bin or with the others that are left. I think I have three more 100 gram balls left. Um, I love... Premier Yarns. It's so beautiful the anti-pilling to work with and I never have any dramas. Um, this particular colourway, the reason it sat in my stash for a long time is it wasn't quite how I imagined it when it turned up and I've had difficulty coming up with ideas to use it. But I think it turned out right. Turned out alright, sorry. I heard a noise. 
in this particular beanie. Um, it could be unisex. I think a boy could wear that just as easily as a girl. So I was really happy with that. Um, I can't wait for next week's hat. I think I'm a little behind. I don't always do them. They have to be fit for purpose. Like I have to be able to sell them in my charity stalls or donate them to charity. And some of the summer hats just don't work for me. So my funk. I decided today because I had two presents left for my birthday from Barbara that I would save one for the actual day and I would open one to lift my spirits and I have opened this one Ta -da! and inside was a hundred percent American grown tea America's classic tea our original tea Charleston tea garden Ta -da! for those of you been with me for a while you know I love tea especially loose leaf tea I can brew in a pot so that's what's happening this afternoon or later this evening it is dark outside we're getting rain we get a bit of sunshine we get more rain it's still wet season it's supposed to be nearly over by the first of may but it doesn't look that way so yes thank you barbara i'm really keen to try that tea she said she went to the tea garden she saw that i enjoyed the australian afternoon tea and she thought i might like to try this one so I'll let you know what I think. But yes, a pot of tea is on the agenda for later tonight. It's a sort of early evening. It's like, well, it feels early evening. It's late afternoon. So that was my finished objects and my crochet for a while. I know from my yarn usage stats for April, they're really down compared to other months. As I said, it's really difficult to get my brain working on a project that requires concentration after doing admin and stuff all day. Um, the gala dinner. It was difficult in the sense since the planning started, the venue were having it at, I've had four function coordinators come and go that I had to deal with and every time the goalposts would move or they didn't know this or that. The last one was quite young, but we did get there in the end. We had the numbers desired. Um, it was extremely hard work. I think when you get 35 emails from one person in two hours in one day, you know you're doing it tough. I'm really grateful to my friend Ulia and I want to thank her for coming along for the night. She helped me out a lot on the night and it was good to have great company at the function. Now, this gala dinner, we didn't do any auctions or raffles. We had a few guest speakers, which I always dread because they can be boring. But the ones we had were awesome. They were funny. They were really good. And we did raise money from donations and they're still coming in. Today, we have raised $34,000 in the honor of this person. Now this person, she was a teacher for 40 odd years. She's doing a different job now. But her fund set up in her name um, will go to scholarships for anyone going to university to study education. And yes, more is coming in. So it was a success. Considering our community is doing it tough. It's um, cost of living is extremely high because of the freight charges and the fuel charges to get things to us. Um, there aren't many jobs out there. I know the coordinator on the night that coordinates the dinner, he was saying to me, he's been around for a while, that restaurants are doing it tough. Even when tourists come to town, they're sharing entrees, they're not buying individual ones. And when they go out for coffee, they're just having the one coffee, not buying the two. So even our tourists aren't spending as much. And unfortunately, as I always say, we rely far too much on tourism here and need to diversify. However, our gala dinner was a success and I'm not the only one tired. I know my boss was asked at the end of the night, one of my bosses who helped me too were really great. Two of them were there all along the way. Um, he was asked how what it was like to organise it and he said, let me put it this way, it's like having a knee transplant surgery, only a lot more painful and recovery time will be a lot longer. And I laughed because I have to agree with him. I'm exhausted. My brain is just bleh. So 
when it comes to finding a project now people call them mindless projects and I've done that too but they're not really mindless we're looking for something that's like a one row repeat it doesn't require a lot of concentration and that sort of thing so that's my goal today have my tea to try and get out of this funk that's affecting my crochet and knitting look for a project that isn't hard work but still brings me joy when I finish it I can't wait for May's hooker versus hooker challenge I like watching the lives I always have a laugh and um, the projects are always interesting I'm disappointed in myself I didn't really go all out and make something bigger but my time and energy levels were limited maybe I can come back with a bang in May Anyway, guys, let me know in the comments below when you get in a funk where your crochet and knitting or crafting isn't bringing you joy, what do you do to get yourself out of it? I've watched a show with Reeves. We've been watching it most nights to try and unwind Shogun. I read the book when I was quite young before, oh, a long time ago. And although the television series doesn't follow the book like, um, most people expect to it was still really great so I can recommend that now I'm not sure if it's on Disney Plus I think it's on Disney Plus which we just subscribe to because something Doctor Who is going to be on there for thing he has to watch his Doctor Who it moved off our free to air channel to Disney Plus anyway if you're looking for something to watch I can recommend Shogun I'm the sort of person when I read a book and they put it on film I don't expect it to be the same as long as it sort of follows the guidelines it's very difficult to interpret so much um, words and vocabulary into a movie and make it into a scene and otherwise they would just go on forever they'd be the longest movies ever because this is a pretty heavy going book I did finish it I don't think I ever finished June though I couldn't find my it was just so heavy and hard going Anyway, that's what I've been up to. Let me know in the comments below what you've been up to. How do you get your mojo back when it's in a funk? Anything. I love reading comments. Maybe that will lift my spirits. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and yeah, keep crafting, guys. Bye for now.